This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight, right here from New York City. Hey, look who's in a new place. You're not in the same place you were. No. In fact, what is that, a workout thing next to you? What is that? It's, uh, it's, it's one of those uh, total gyms. Total gyms, okay. Right now, it's just, all, it's just decoration. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, uh, you just decided to leave your old place, right? Right. Rather than wait for them to raise the rent or get rid of you? No, they already raised the rent. No. How much? 40% you said or something like that? Something like that. Like 38%. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no kidding. So an old friend invited you to stay with her and and, uh, help her take care of her overhead, as it were. Yeah. Well, how's it working out? So far, so good. I'm still unpacking. You're still unpacking. Okay. Right. Uh, did it take you a long time to pack? I mean, was that rough for you or? Yeah, and then it took uh, like four days to move. Four days to move. Okay. Right. But you did that with your car, right? My car, a friend had a truck that we, we used on one day to move the bed. Yeah. And another friend had an SUV. And it, wow. Because that's, a, you know, I always hated moving. No kidding. And what happened was, I remember the first time I ever moved, basic move. I went from um, Marin County, uh, I think it was Marin County, or where was it? I, I can't remember where I was exactly. Maybe I was in Sacramento. I don't know. But I went to Texas, and everything I owned was in the back seat of my car, or in my car. Back seat, right. everything. Everything I owned was That's in the how I car. came out to California. And in my Volkswagen bug with a bag of weed and a couple of black beauties. <laughs> and I hit the road. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I had... That was the total, sum total of things that I felt I had that I needed to take with me. Right. Right. So, I look at that. I remember that. I remember that everything was in that car. Uh, fairly big trunk in those days, you know. And then the back seat of the car. Everything was there. And uh, today, if I had to move, forget it. I'm leaving this stuff here and moving, you know? Uh, did you leave stuff there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I left a lot of stuff. You, you didn't like those people, did you? No. The new people? No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. So you figured, what the hell, I'll just, uh, you know. I haven't even told them I've left yet. <laughs> So that one day they're going to go, gee, we haven't got a rent from this guy. Right. Uh, and and uh, we better go over and see what's happening over there. Let's knock on his door. I wonder how many months it's going to be before they finally decide to go over and find out if you're still there. Right. Yeah. I left the place a mess. Well, you didn't like them. They raised your rent 38%. Right. I mean, come right. on. That, that's ridiculous. You know, right. who raises rent 38%? Um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, that just, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised it was even allowed in your state. I mean, it is. I called city hall to check on it and they said, yeah, it's, it's allowed. Wow. Because like I here, called city hall. here in New York, they have so many laws about rentals and everything. They, they can't raise right. you more than like 2% per year or something, you know, is it 2% or 4%? I think it's it's four percent on two, a two year lease. Maybe I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't had. Now, do you have a le- do you have a lease? Uh, yes, I have a lease. Yeah, and uh, they probably in a year or so uh, will be able to raise my rent. You know, by two percent or something like that. Right. Which in this case. So still be paying nothing. Well, 
let's see, one percent of my rent is five dollars. <laughs> 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 You know, I, I still don't believe it. I still don't believe what I'm, you know, living with here, you know. Right, I can't believe what you're paying. Yeah, I can't believe what I'm paying. So, you know, and who knows how long that'll last, you know. But right. they, they haven't done anything about, uh, I've talked to other people about this, they haven't done anything to, uh, any indication that they're going to appeal the verdict by the judge, which right. I thought they would. <laughs> <laughs> because they said they were going to appeal it. They had this, they had to immediately say, okay, we're going to appeal it, and then you have six months to actually file the appeal. And how, how long ago did the verdict come in? Uh, I would say maybe it was almost uh, 10 months ago. Oh, really? Yeah, so I think, I don't think they're planning on uh, on appealing. I think they filed for the appeal because, you know, they wanted to see what they were going to do, and then they just decided no. I think here's the thinking, I think, I'm not sure, and it's a depressing thought, okay? So let me, let me throw this at you, is that they have an attitude that, uh, well, you know, you can go and appeal this, and this is gonna cost you this much money, and then you're gonna have to do this, it's gonna cost you that much money. Instead of appealing, uh, why don't you just wait, wait for these two people to de die, you know? <laughs> because they're not getting any younger. You know, he's 82. Oh, I, I, I called Saz about yeah. getting my uh, dues dropped. Yeah. You have to turn 70. You have to turn 70, okay. I didn't know what age it was because it suddenly happened to me one day. I noticed that I wasn't getting charged for it. And right. I figured, what the hell is that? All? You know, when does that start? And I thought maybe it started at 65. But, yeah, that's what I thought too. But what? You're, but it's seventy. Oh, you're but you're sixty-seven now. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. So you got four years, and then you don't pay any dues anymore. Right. Which is kind of nice, you know. I bet. Yeah. And you're, you're still a member. Oh yeah, I'm still a member. Uh, but but you, uh, you uh, how much do you pay in dues per per uh, what is it? Half a year. Per half a year. Yeah. One sixteen. One sixteen. It's up to that, huh? Because yeah, I, I remember when I when I was doing it, it was like twenty five dollars. If you didn't, right. If you didn't make so much money out of uh, out of uh, uh, SAG after, but right. And I didn't make any money out of SAG after. I was always working at stations that weren't after. Oh, know? is that right? Well, I mean, not that they were scab stations. They just uh, never, you know, maybe they went for a vote to go SAG or go after rather and they never did right see so if they don't well then uh, you're uh, you know you're, uh, you're you're good to go like I worked what year, did, what, what year did you become a member oh geez I became a member when I was here in New York back in uh, the 1980s Nah, I've been a member since 80. 1970s, excuse me, 1970s. Right. So I, th I would say it was somewhere around 70, well, it's probably, probably 1970, I would say. I'm trying to think, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, did I have to join when I was in Chicago? Was that an after station? I think it was. I think maybe it was even earlier than that. I think it was like 68. Oh, really? 69, yeah. I could probably look at my th card. It probably says member since. Yes, yes, it does. I'm going to have to check that out. I can't remember how long I've been, been a member. Um, if I had my wallet here, I could pull it out. But, you know. But they just keep sending me the cards and the zero, 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 zero. Okay, fine. You know, that's fine with right. me. Now I just wish I was working union gigs and making yeah, lots of money and I can go, hey, I don't have to pay dues on that. You know? Right. But, what, because it's no, I think if you, if you make X amount of dollars, you have to pay dues again. Oh, really? <clears throat> I think it's over $5,000. Oh, well, then I'll get myself some jobs that are less than $5,000. You know what I get? There are these things uh, that I, I signed up for. I just get them so I can look at them. Right. I never do anything about them, but it's these casting things for extras. Oh, right. You tell me about this. Yeah, and there's, a, there's an AFTRA. You have to be an AFTRA. 
in, on a lot of these, and they pay right. you after a you know an after fee. And uh, uh, I've I've thought about doing it, but you know I don't know eight hours of just sitting around doing nothing. They treat you like cattle. It, yeah, they do. Right. They don't. You don't even. Do you get to use the, the what we what they call um, what's the food uh, craft services? I don't think you get to craft services, but you get lunch you or get, dinner. Well, that would be the craft services. No craft services comes around during the shoot and brings you snacks oh, during, I see. The, during the day. Oh, okay. That you don't get. You don't get any snacks. I don't get snacks. I just get the no. main course, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't eat until after the, uh, the uh, speaking parts. You eat after the speaking parts, so you yeah. get the leftovers. Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, well. Okay. So, what, what, that, what, what? What uh, dictates that something is a speaking part? I mean, I realize, lines. huh? That you've got a lot. Line. But suppose you have like one line, this one word. That's the speaking part. That's the speaking part. Okay, fine. Right. Even a grunt. Huh? Even a grunt? Well, suppose right. now I'm an extra and there's scenes have being held and I grunt. No, like, they wouldn't let you. They, they wouldn't let me. I'm just trying to make a few extra bucks for my kids for crying out loud. Let me grunt. Yeah, the ten kids you got. Yeah, it's not that much. Is it not that much of a difference? Is it? Uh, the, the extras get about one hundred and twenty-eight dollars a day. Is right, and I got. think uh, speaking roles are between five and six hundred, maybe more now. Oh, really? Maybe more. Okay, but you know, one hundred and twenty-eight is, you know. Not bad for a day's work. Not bad for a day's work, I guess. Right. I mean, the thing is, though, they make you go for fitting sometimes. And I right. don't. I, if it's a period piece, you have to dress it in costume. Right. But I don't know. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if I uh, uh, if I if I uh, do that, now I forgot what the point was I was going to make. Hmm. Being fitted for a costume. The fitting, oh yeah, do I get paid for the fitting of the costume? Yes, probably. Uh, well, I don't know about extras, but I know speaking roles do. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Sure. Because, I mean, if I have to go down and get a fitting for a costume, I should be get paid for that. Yeah, I'm, you should. Because I'm going out of my way the day before or whatever. That's right. To do something. Right. Yeah. If you have to be on set, then you have to get paid. Yeah. Uh, and I know that usually I see the price I see is a hundred and ninety eight dollars or something like that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Do I have any sitting here? I'm looking at the. No, I don't have any that come up yet today. Usually they come up in the afternoon and they're like I get like twenty of them a day. Oh really? But that the, many? The reason I get them is because it allows me to see what shows are being shot and how long they're being shot for and things like that so i then know that like i'm no, right now they're shooting succession the hbo show and okay. they're asking for extras okay so i know they're now doing another season of succession right you know right and then uh, they had a marvelous mrs mays a lot of those and right. and it would say well we need a certain amount of people to play an audience in a broadway theater so you know that one of the episodes is going to take place in a broadway theater right, you know? right, right so that's right. one of the reasons why i just subscribe to it it's just fun to read you know it's a fun i read. bet but so now you're in your new digs you, uh, yes uh, uh, this is not your room right no i'm out in the uh, living room the living room oh okay yeah yeah and uh, yeah, because that's where you always put the gym furniture is in the living room. That's right. Marjorie got a Peloton. Where does it go? The living room. Is that right? Did she use it? No, she sold it. Oh, she sold it. Yeah, she she got tired of it. She found that found she wasn't using it, and uh, actually, she doesn't she doesn't even go to her gym. You know, yeah. But she still has a membership. Yeah, she still does. I mean, I don't know if she's paying it anymore or if she's on some kind of, you know, leave or whatever. Because for a while there during COVID, you could just say, well, I'm not coming in to work out and I right. want to be I want to be put on uh, on hold. 
and they they did that. But I don't know what the story is now. I think I wonder if she. I'll have to ask her. She has. Now, what kind of Peloton equipment did she have? A bike. A bike. Yeah. Yeah. One of those things. And I I uh, I, I would use it every now and then. You know, and you they would walk by it. Well, the th no, the thing is, they had they have these uh, these uh, videos of the road you're going down, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can get different roads to go down or mountain climb a bike thing to go up and so on. Right. And one of them was uh, every day when I had a bike and I lived in the marina, I would take my bike and I would go out and I took this whole thing through the Presidio and then out to Fort Point, which was the end of the, uh, the or the beginning of the Golden Gate Bridge. But under it, okay. under it, you know that place, that kind of that. Fort, I know what you're talking about. That fort, yeah, Fort Point, and then I would go back. Well, what was one of these rides I could take on the Peloton? Was the ride out to Fort Point? Is that right? Yeah. So I would. Wow, do, how I, cool! I would do that every now and then. I, I don't know if oh. it went all the way to Fort Point, but it it went through the Presidio. So. So it was the same path that you took. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. That is so cool. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny. You get the Peloton. It costs like $2,500. Yeah, it's not cheap. Yeah. And then you got to pay them for those little lessons and stuff from everybody. Right. So, so there's a monthly fee on top of that's it. That's another $39 a month monthly fee. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going, you know. Plus, I don't want, to, I don't want any of those trainers, right? Because they're all buffed and they're all fit and so on, and it's intimidating. I just want to go right. on a little ride, so I do just do the little ride things. There was some through Italy and you know different places. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But I but I didn't want any of it. Marjorie liked the people who were you know intimidating her. You know, it's come trainers. on, yeah. We're, we're, and they and they're always playing their music. Right. All right. And they're yelling at you. Come on, Peloton. Come on now. Hurry up, Peloton. Yeah. Let's do it, Peloton. Well, see, like, shut up. it seems that one of the trainers at Peloton on these videos is a the niece, I think, of Marjorie's best friend. Oh, is oh, that right? Uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. And uh, her name is Jen something. Uh, and she Jen is... Jen something. Jen something. Uh, but anyway, she, you know, she, uh, 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 she used to do that every day. She did like, oh, I did, a, I did an hour today. I did an hour and a half today, and I'm going, yeah, but she didn't go anywhere, right? You know, right. I mean, that's the one thing I hate about stationary bikes is they don't go anywhere. If I get on a regular bike, I actually get to see scenery. You know, I actually that's get right. to smell smells and. You know, do things like that. That's what I like yeah, about. Yeah, but in New York City, what do you what do you smell? Uh, well, exhaust. New York City, forget it. You know. Exhaust, urine. Yeah, you know. So I mean, I used to tell people that I I, I have a stationary bike, and they go, "Oh, it's great. What kind is it?" I said, "Well, it's not really a stationary bike. It's not meant to be, but that's what it is, because huh. it just sits in the hallway, <laughs> right. not doing anything." Oh, it's, it's a, a clothes hanger. It's a stationary bike, you know. So, but uh, anyway, so uh, so uh, you're, uh, you're you're you kind of kind of moved in, right? You don't do you feel kind of moved in. Do you feel settled? No, not yet. Yeah. Now you were telling us, and this is interesting, that the, your your new roommate, your roomie, right, is an ex girlfriend. That's right. And, and we were together in high school, college. We lived together in Paris. We lived together in San Francisco. We lived together in Worcester. We lived together, we, were, we dated for a long time. And you never got married? No. You did other stuff, however. You had benefits there? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So you did that. We lived together, Alex. We well, lived together. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm trying to be, how can we call it? nice about this <laughs> why change now Alex why change now yeah well anyway so now it's back to the old girlfriend right but, but we're just we're just we're just 
sharing a, a house. We're not sharing a room. Yeah, and you're and and you're uh, are you? But you know, I, how do you do that? I don't know if I if that would. I mean, I'm good at having ex relationships with ex right. ex girlfriends. In fact, I always said that I was very proud of the fact that most of my ex-girlfriends I still talk to or communicate right. with, all right? Right. Uh, it, it, very seldom did I have a nasty ending to a relationship that, you know, I, you know. So uh, I, um, uh, I've enjoyed that. And, uh, you know, it just seems to me that, that it would be a little hard for me, though, I think, to move in with one of those people. Well, it's a matter of economics. Well, I know it's a matter of economics for the two and, of you. And, right and I'm, I'm waiting for an apartment to open up. I'm on a waiting list at a couple of places. So this is like a temporary stop. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're not going to stay there? No, no. Oh. Like maybe six months. Yeah, but she doesn't mind how long you're going to be there. Right. Okay. Well, I've only been here a couple of days. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, did, when you were together as a couple, right? Did you argue? No. No. Really? She was in San Francisco with me. She went to the uh, comedy competitions with me. Yeah. She, she might have come down to the. She might have. You might have met her. Her name was Peach. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. No. 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 Um, but uh, um, yeah, no, I don't. Re I don't remember. I may have met her. I'm sure you but, had. But I just don't remember her. You know. Right. Not. Right. I don't mean that in any nasty way. It's just no. uh, in those days I was so consumed with myself that I didn't pay attention to anybody else. Well, you pay attention to the comics. Yeah. 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 Well. Uh, yeah. I, I had a great appreciation for the comics. Um, I considered being a stand-up comic the bravest job in America. Be Is that right? Because every night you go out on stage and face rejection. Well, it's the purest, I, I think it's the purest form of theater. It's just you, a microphone, and your wit. Yes, that's true. But on I, an empty stage. But I found it incredibly scary. I... I could have never been a stand-up comic. I mean, I was able to get up and do material for an audience, but it was my audience from the radio, and right. so I had a pre-programmed audience. Right. You know, and so right. I would just I would just pull something that was like you know, uh, just a callback to something I did on the show or something like that, and they would all laugh, and you know, so I had them I had them from the minute I walked out on the stage. Right. Right, right, right. So that wasn't scary. But if I went into a club where nobody knew me, and now I had to do material, I could not do that. I and and so I always admired comics for being able to. You know. Well, I remember. I don't know if you remember when I had long hair. Hmm. I had really long hair at one point, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm wearing a tank top, and I'm walking up to the stage, and this couple sitting in the aisle. Just look at me, and they looked at each other, and they got up and left. <laughs> you know Who something? Left? I have a video of you doing your act. Do you uh, really? Yeah, I, we 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 were at the Great American Music Hall, and I have a tape that I made of it that I put up. Actually, I put it online. Uh, Did I'll, you really? Yeah, I'll try and find it for you. It's called uh, you know Alex Bennett's Recession Special. Remember the Recession Specials we did. Right. And and I think you did have a tank top there and long hair. Probably. But that was your persona, right? Right, right. R right. What in the tattoo? What possessed you with the with the uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The um, uh, tank top. I was in good shape. Really? I actually had muscles. I did too at one point. I went and worked yeah, out. Yeah, at one point. At one point, I went and worked out. I started working out regularly. Right now, I have a pot belly and no muscles. Yeah, well, I I remember a woman going, "Wow, nice body." Right. You know, right. and, I, and I, that was the first time I realized that working out had really worked out for me. 
Uh, but you know that yeah, all. Radio, your radio show got me laid more often than not. Mine did. Uh, I did too for my radio show. So right. you know. Anyway, hey, listen. We're done. Well, we we're running out of time here. We got about thirty seconds. So, any gigs you want to plug? I'm doing another podcast from the comedy store, but I'm going to do it uh, over Zoom. Over Zoom. On December on December sixteenth. Okay, that's uh, the comedy store where in Worcester. No, the comedy store in Hollywood. Hollywood, really? Oh, good. Good. It's an eight o'clock show. So it's eleven o'clock my time. Let me know when, and I'll I'll watch it. Okay. All right. Ladies All right. and gentlemen, that's our old friend. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Alex. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its eighth year of talk, like you've never heard it before. Well, uh, that's uh, Steve Kravitz. We love Steve. We always say we love Steve. So we just want you to know once again that we love Steve. Okay, so uh, I'm sitting here. Usually, you know, I'll tell you, I, I don't know. I'm just getting tired of this. I, I oh, well, uh, somebody has joined the group. We have nobody ready to go on the show tonight. And when this happens at uh, the hour, when I you know, stop with the interview or whatever. Uh, and there's nobody there. I just go, you know, maybe I just go to sleep early. You know. So I'm sitting here and Jeff Stein's waiting to come on and we love Jeff and he's terrific. He's always there for us. Okay. Uh, but uh, very few of the rest of you are on Thursday nights, which is beginning to make me want to rethink Thursday nights. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why <clears throat> uh, I get less people uh, calling on Thursday nights than I do on Wednesday nights or even Friday nights and I can't figure it out so uh, I, I don't know I you know I, I really question uh, whether I should uh, I should con you know continue with Thursday Thursday nights um, uh, and then probably we'll do away with <laughs> Wednesday nights and then we'll do away with Friday nights and then I don't have to do a show at all you know and then I'm out of show business uh, but uh, you know I you know I mean I, I, I think about doing other things but I don't know if I have the uh, energy to do it you know storytelling things like that you know stuff that actually does very well on the internet you know I'll tell you a story that you don't know and now I'm gonna make it into a mystery and you know that kind of crap all right. Well, anyway, all we got is uh, let me let me just admit him here. All we have here is uh, is Jeff. Uh, 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 turn turn your uh, thing yeah, down there. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. It's just uh, it's just you and me, and uh, I'm just wondering right. if uh, if uh, if I'm going to keep going here. You know, but we'll we'll you and I'll talk for a little bit here. We'll give him about five minutes, okay. and then if we don't see anybody. Adios, you know, and I don't mean that in any uh, horrible way, but you know, I'm just one person, you know. So, well, we've been having some uh, very difficult problems. Oh, uh, uh, let me see more of your face. Let me see more of your. Face. Oh, sorry. You've been having some difficult problems. What are the problems? Well, not me, but my wife mostly. Really? What? Yeah, her mother's very sick. Oh boy, I, yeah. you know, uh, that's bound to happen. How old's the mother? Ninety-two. Ninety-two. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean, there are certain things like at ninety-two you got to expect. You know, I mean, I kept saying that about my mother. She lived to be a hundred. You know, uh, but uh, when when she died, everybody said, "Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss." You know that kind of crap. And I said, "Don't feel sorry for my loss." I mean, I had her for a hundred years. I had her for more years than. Uh, she was taking up parking spaces, you know. I mean, uh, so there's a certain point at which you go, you know that there are certain inevitabilities. I'm sure even mm. Pam knows the inevitability. Oh, that at her oh, mother's she age, she's not going to live for the next 20 years. A mother had a great life. Yeah, yeah. And a great, no and a, and a great um, son-in-law. 
Uh, so, yeah, that's a stretch. <laughs> I heard her laugh there for a second. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, but you know, it's, it's not it's not terrific. Oh, here comes Alan. You know, so, so now we have a duo, but it's still it's still not enough, really. You know, but. Anyway, but uh, Pam, I'm, I I hope your mother comes through this. But you know, uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's just no. it's just got it's just the end of life. That's it's the end. Life. You know, I I um, I was watching this documentary that Morgan Freeman did. It's on the universe, and it's really not very good because what they do is they try and use cute little animals to teach you about the universe, and I don't. Oh. You know, I, it, it's, it's a BBC thing, right? But they would go with these elephants who were looking for water, and then they would do the history of how water came to be on this planet, which is really quite fascinating. Water was brought to this planet by asteroids that impacted the planet and just kind of sat here for several hundred, several hundred thousand years, right? And then at a certain point, steam came gushing out of these volcanoes and created clouds and then we got moisture and we got uh, we got uh, um, uh, water um, and the reason I didn't why really know that you were that old yeah, yeah. really I was gonna yeah. say were you were you here when the asteroids left the water here no 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 <laughs> no no but I was selling it to people at the time okay uh, good, no, good but, you. no but here's what happened uh, the um, go uh, it's, it's, uh, Mars was a very, it was a water planet. I mean, it had, it. yeah, it had oceans and lakes and streams and, and all of that. It was a very, very, it was what you would call a water planet, just like ours is a water planet. And all of a sudden, one day, all the water started disappearing. Well, not one day, it took several hundred thousand years for it to happen. But eventually, all the, all the liquid was sucked right out of Mars. Now, how did that happen? The sun sent out solar winds, which circulated around Mars and drew away all the liquid on the planet. That's, I, I, don't know, I don't know much about weather, but this guy's starting to sound like Donald Trump now. No, no. <laughs> direct. What, no, 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 but let me finish the story. So now you're going to ask the question, well, how come the Earth didn't get affected by these solar winds? Yeah, how come? Because we have a magnetic core. And that magnetic core sent out magnetic signals to the sun that worked as a shield against the solar winds. And so, therefore, without any solar winds, our liquid stayed here. And we became what we are. But when I saw all this, it's like, 25 billion years ago, blop, you know, the, the, there was nothing here 25 billion years ago. There was no such thing as the universe. No. You know, and all of a sudden it comes into being. I, can you imagine a universe not existing? Because mm -hmm. if it doesn't exist, doesn't it have to not exist in something? You know, but anyway. So... Uh, when I looked at all this, and they're talking in terms of 25 billion years and 15 billion years, oh, just five billion years ago, we, you know, we started to get fish uh, in the water, you know, <clears throat> things like that. I'm going, geez, you know, what my life is like this. I mean, it's not even like that. I can't even approximate it with my fingers apart. Uh, it's just an infidesc, and yours too, and and uh, but. Uh, especially mine, is compared to the history of the universe, it's insignificant, just totally insignificant. So is Thursday's going to be the three Jews Thursdays or something? This, this happened last week, too. Well, the, the three Jews till 1130, because I'm not oh. going to do this for an hour, you know. Is Jack going to be on tonight? Yeah, Can supposedly he, he says he's going to be on tonight. As I wrote him back, I'll believe it when I see it, you know. And there must not be many people that that follow him because it, it, there's been so many inconsistencies in his in his show between but, health and, and and problems with this that and the other. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, have yeah. any idea how many people actually listen to it? I think about three or four. 
you know. Oh, okay. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, it's sufficient enough that it's worth doing, you know. Yeah. And sure. you got to remember, when we do the shows, it doesn't matter how many people are listening or watching. It's a matter of, after a certain amount of time, how many people did, you know. Right. Well, I always know that if I miss your show for some reason, I can watch it. His show, I can't watch. Yeah, but you can listen to it. I yeah, right. I know I can listen because yeah, it's it. audio. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But anyway, so I mean, all I'm saying is, is that I I've gotten into this whole thing about look how insignificant I am, you know, and it, 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 it I'm I'm at, I'm what uh, 80, 80 going on eighty three years, okay. Uh, and um, how insignificant is that compared to five billion? You know. Mm. Uh, but anyway, who's there? I, we don't even have a picture. We have a, you're kind of out of focus. There, oh, there we go. There's, oh, there we go. there's Brian. Hello, Brian. Uh, bathtub Brian. Yeah, my man. Our I was thinking about just. Man. Yeah, all right. How you guys doing? Yeah, you'll always be known as Bathtub Brian. On your, uh, I know. on your tombstone, we're going to write mm -hmm. Brett Bathtub Brian. Please do. That would be beautiful. I'm going to see if maybe I should clean this lens. Huh? Well, no, that, I it, like it, Rodney it, it, Dangerfield's... Uh, well, I guess he left when he cleaned. Are you still there, Brian? Like... Brian? Yeah, I think... Okay. Oh, yeah, you, you go, what you may can... have done is you may have pushed the uh, the mute button while you were cleaning the, the thing. Yeah, that's that's something people do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rod, Rodney Dangerfield's tombstone says, "There goes the neighborhood." <laughs> no. It does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on my on my tombstone, uh, I want to have written, "I told you I was sick." <laughs> or I, I thought I, I used to be somebody important was what you were gonna have. That's not what the quote is. It's he used I used to be a big shot. Oh well, okay, whatever the quote is. Sure. No, it'd be it'd be I told you I was sick. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so uh what's happening in the news? Anything? I don't care. Cares. Yeah. Not much. Yeah. Um mm. When I when I see um, well Donald Trump is still in a lot of trouble for that dinner he had with Kanye West. Uh, wow, in trouble with in what trouble with kid. who? Huh? In trouble with who? Uh, the Republican Party. Believe it or not, they're all coming down on him. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I just thought it was just sycophants left with him. Yeah. Yeah. No. A, 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 he a dinner was uh, at his place with Kanye West and a white ra a, a white supremacist. I don't know. Oh. The supremacist na last name is Hernandez. Sounds Latino to me. Is it Hernandez? Was his name? I, I think so. I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Uh, Fuentes. 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 Okay. There you go. Sorry. Well, yeah. you, no, but you can still be anti-Semitic and be, you know, Mexican. Sure. Right? Sure. I've watched his videos. He's, that kid's a mess. Uh, he, he's, he's got all kinds of closeted issues going on with him. Why do you watch yeah. him, though? Because he's just so bizarre? Oh, yeah. I used to listen to Alex Jones and all that stuff. So, like, you know, like, I, I, I love Crazy Town. You know what I mean? I roll my sleeves up. I just see. I just don't buy it. You know what I mean? That's the difference. There's a lot of people watch that stuff and they buy that shit. Like I'm it. like, let me see what's going on. You yeah. know? Yeah. You know? I, love I don't it. watch Fox News, but I'll watch the crazies, the real crazies. <laughs> well, I mean, there is an entertainment value in that, but the problem is that's the same thing that attracts people to them. You know? And well, my brother, my brother is. Um, it's funny. My brother and I. My, we're very much the same, and for years, we would talk about all this crazy shit we'd watch. But see, the problem was is my brother, he's uh, he starts believing it, mm. and and that's the difference. And for years, we would talk about all kinds of crazy shit, mm. and I he would play it off. But since then, he's kind of he's always jumped from well, religion to religion. I want to wanna, religion. yeah, but I want to know where we made that jump from the left to the right for conspiracy theories. Because when I was 
on the left and younger. We sat around all the time saying, oh, the government's out to get us, and there's a plot to do this, and there's a plot to do that, right? That was our thing. And then all of a sudden, it became the thing of the right wingers. And now they're the ones that are paranoid about, you know, baby snatching rings, and, mm -hmm. you know, and snatch snatching rings and, you know, things like that. So. Maybe that was with Reagan. Well, we, I mean, we, we, were, we were paranoid that the, well, and we're kind of right that the government was watching us. I know that I was being watched uh, back then uh, and uh, that I, in fact, had a, uh, a an FBI report on me uh, because they suspected me of hanging out because I hung out with the uh, right winger, left wingers. You know. Abby Hoffman? Yeah, Abby people Hoffman. like that, yeah. yeah. And so I was on the list of Nixon's uh, 10,000 people to be watched. Not the mm -hmm. thousand, but ten thousand. They probably sold that to Facebook, and now they're watching those people. Probably. Well, that, probably. That's exactly right. It's it's corporations now. It turned out to be. I mean, everyone thought nineteen eighty four was going to be a government uh, thing, but it just turned out it was corporations instead. Oh, wow. So where's the outrage on that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Big Brother is the black web, you know, the dark web, uh, which knows everything about you even though you didn't tell them anything, you know? So, what the hell? Yeah. Well, all these corporate guys these days are turning out to be crazy people. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, yes. Well, uh, let's, let's talk about that. Elon Musk, who I have had a great deal of respect for, because I felt that the things he involved himself in were things that were going to help the planet. You know, SpaceX definitely will eventually help the planet. Uh, and then we talk about um, um, uh, Tesla. Tesla is, you know, it started a trend that is going to free us from gasoline and from fossil fuels. So he's done two magnificent, magnificent things. And then he goes off and does this Twitter thing and now have you heard about this new company of his? He has this neuro something or another that's been testing on dogs and something like 23 dogs have died in the process in which he's- They were, in, all, re, they were all Republican dogs. So no, okay. he's planting chips in yeah, dogs or, or in, no, excuse me, in, in not dogs. Uh, monkeys. Monkeys, monkeys. Monkeys, right. Yeah, macaques, mm. as a matter of fact. Right. And, um, he uh, planted uh, uh, chips in their brains, and they can type. You know, they can do all kinds of things. Well, you know, he killed quite a few of them in the process. Some of them actually just went mad and started really? biting their fingers wow. off and things like that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been a been really, really uh, hmm. something the last couple of days with him. And then this whole Twitter thing. But... You know, the, 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 he, what, he, what he says he wants to do with this new company is he wants to do something that like go, oh, you know, uh, Jeff had a stroke, but put plant a chip in him that will reverse all the effects of that stroke. That's what his plans are in this mm. deal. So, Yeah, well, uh, so my, my crazy right wing uh, friends and stuff, I, the whole family, I used to go over there and hang out all the time. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, put up with it and stuff. And I entertain all kinds of conversations. And um, they always talked about, you know, the mark of the devil and how the government's going to try to plant chips inside of us. And <laughs> it's just like you were just saying, when, when does all this shit start flipping scripts? It's like now it's well, now you it's, know, they're, they're worried about uh, chips. They're worried about the uh, the vaccine having a chip in it mm -hmm. that would track you. OK. And you go, oh, you're crazy, you're nuts, you know? But then you hear about the Musk and what he's trying to do with a chip in, in chimpanzees, you know, and, and you begin to wonder, <laughs> are we that far off from that? He, yeah, he says he, that they can cure blind people that they were blind at birth. <laughs> yeah, but he's not saying he can cure it. He says he's looking for the cure. That this, no, putting it, they're putting a transmitter there, what's and they're a, connecting what's a, something to that. What's the company called? Neuralink or something like that? Neurocrazy. Yeah. 
Well, you, you guys should remember that I have a pacemaker in here. Mm. It's an electronic device. It's working every day. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me hit the button and stop it working. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so you mm. want to put one in the brain? That's not such a hard uh, concept. Well, it's, it's a bad think. concept to this extent. Would you like a chip in your brain that would reverse a lot of the problems you have from the stroke, let's say? I yeah, would. I would. I at, would. The cost, yeah. at the cost of Elon Musk having control over that chip. Yeah. Well, okay, big question, right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. No, I mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I think it's wonderful if we could take people who who have had lifelong problems like blindness and be able to get them mm -hmm. to see again. Although I don't mm -hmm. know that a I don't know that a blind person who's like in their fifties particularly wants to see. Um, Why oh, they? Well, no, old story. Ray Charles, when he was mm -hmm. in his forties, was told they could do an operation that would reverse his uh, ability, his blindness, and really? he turned it down. Because he said, I've gone this long blind and the world I know out there is blind. They've taken people who've been blind for like 25 years and given them their sight back. And the problems it creates are ridiculous because they learned how to operate their lives without vision. And all of a sudden, they see everything. They see the wife that they're married to and they freak out. Oh my God. Well, they look at themselves in the that. mirror. You oh, know, yeah. Yeah, you know. Like a dog looking at, at, at itself in the mirror. Yeah, but I mean, uh, <clears throat> Brian, would you want a chimp implanted in you if you a chimp implanted in you a chip <laughs> implanted in you if uh, if it would do something to correct some kind of medical problem? Uh, I back me in the know, You know what? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's Brian? Oh, we got two Brian's. Oh, we do have two Brian. Brian's. Oh, God, I didn't think about that. You know what that's just... I meant the other Brian, Brian. With... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Google works on all this crazy stuff, too. They have big teams on these things because Tiffany was on one of those teams that are top secret. You're not supposed to discuss what they're working on, which are crazy ideas. Mm hmm. And they spend all kinds of money on it. And when they when they spend so much money on on certain items, those just go and they they put those people onto different projects. But they work on some crazy ideas too. Musk, who's working on crazy ideas, he's just making everything public. When he should probably keep his mouth shut. I guess I don't know. I, but Google does, and and they spend a lot of money on stuff. I mean, not not just you know. A couple million. They spend a lot of money on these projects. A lot of people are on these projects. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Stevie Wonder's on that uh, project. In fact, they cured his blindness. If you look into that, um, there's all kinds of evidence that he can really see. I don't know if you guys. Have well, heard I that. can tell you this for sure. He can't. Okay. But he caught that microphone stand. Did, did you ever see the video where he caught the microphone stand well, that Paul McCartney knocked over? He is, I believe, <laughs> I, I believe, and this may be, I may be wrong in this. Not everybody is completely blind. They are, t they are legally blind. Uh, and uh, he may have a certain amount of just vision that gives him shadows and so on that maybe saw that happening. I'm pretty sure it's just another conspiracy rabbit hole I went down. I I, I, I would put money on that. I I, I knew I knew um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Stevie, and and actually we were quite close because I helped him make a hit out of a couple of his records when nobody would play them. Mm -hmm. uh, one of it was Superstition. He brought in one night while I was working, and he said, "Here, put this on your turntable. I want this is the first time anybody's going to hear it anywhere." And, and he put it on the turntable and no, scratched no, it no, 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 no. But but I uh, I knew him quite well. And one night I go to a party uh, down in the village, and uh, he shows up, right? And he just walks right by me, and he talks to some other people and everything. And finally, later on in the evening, I go up to him, go up to him, and I tap him on the shoulder and say, "Stevie, it's Alex." He goes, "Oh, Alex, how are you?" And I said, "Just fine." I said, "But man, I'll tell you, fame has gotten to you." He said, "How's that?" I said, you came in, and I was standing right there, and you didn't even recognize me. <laughs> he had a good laugh out of it. 
He would. He yeah, used to call me. He used to call me at three in the morning on my show and say, "Hey, Alex, it's Stevie. Listen, uh, I'm I'm going to pass by your uh, studio, and uh, we'll get in the car. I'll take you for a drive." <laughs> <laughs> it's not far from true, though. What he would do is he would take a car, go out to a parking lot that was empty, yeah. and then he would just drive in circles around it. <laughs> so, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, that, that, that was Stevie. He was blind. He was quite blind. You know. Mm. Um, but I always liked his music. Oh, he's terrific. Is that yeah, terrific? Great, great music. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what is it about blind black guys that makes for good music? You know? <laughs> I mean, all the blues musicians, Blind Lemon, Jefferson, or whatever, you yeah. know? How do these blind people tell when they when they're done wiping their ass? Uh, that is a question I asked Stevie. Really? Yes. You want to know the answer? Sure. I, I, I said, you know, how do you know when you're through wiping your derriere? I couldn't say ass on radio in those days. And he said, friction. He said, when it isn't sliding anymore and it's you get nothing but friction. I know it's done. Oh, that's that's clever. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, mm -hmm. but you see, you think that they can't, people can't do certain things because they're blind, but that's the reason why some of these people don't want to suddenly be able to see is because they're negotiating mm -hmm. just fine being blind. Yeah, I guess. That's been their whole life, you know, for like 30 years or 40 years, and all of a sudden you're going to give them sight? They wouldn't know what to do with it. I just think the brain is so complex. I don't know how they can. I mean, the heart, you know, heart is complex too. But I think the brain is so complex. How are you going to stick something in there and be able to hit those nerves? And well, yeah, they well, ought to give it to Trump to start with and see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> A good testing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll be glad when we don't ever pull any more jokes about Donald Trump. That he's well, that. We, well, we don't. Hmm. This guy. I don't know how to point wherever he is, but that guy is. That's who it is. Uh, oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. We don't make any more jokes of him. Alan. So, Brian, I asked these guys, uh, Sigmund. Uh, yeah. Let, I'll call you Sigmund. I'll call him Neary. Then, then we'll be okay. Sigmund, what did you do for Thanksgiving? We had a quiet one. Just uh, my betrothed and the two kids. and McDonald's burgers. What? Yeah, we did turkey. We did the we did the typical stuff. Yeah, I'm a, I'm on a keto diet right now, so mm -hmm. she made my own keto stuffing, and she made me just just for me and and keto cranberry sauce, and she's masterful at that stuff. So it was pretty special for me. Keto, um, yeah. um, um, how's it's it work? It, it, it's, it's like Atkins. it's Atkins, yeah. But how's it working? Yeah. How's it working for you? Uh, it. It's the one thing that works fast on me. I mean, I can cut weight super fast on, on keto. Uh, mm. I've done it before, and then I've put it on. Um, mm. So there, I'm, I do it again. I mean, she was like, you got to get back with keto. Because we're getting married in March out in Gettysburg. And she's like, she's like, I, I already know you. You're not even going to want to look at the wedding photos if you're fat. So you got to slim down. And I was like, she's right. Well, you got to slim down so, for your own health too. I mean, I I lost yes, uh, I know I lost fifty pounds. I gained twenty five of them back using low carb, but I got uh, gained twenty five of them back when I had my prostate thing, uh, the pro a prostate operation, the radiation and the seeds and things like mm -hmm. that, and that puts weight on you. But I haven't been using. I haven't been doing low carb. But I have been eating anything I want to, and I'm not gaining weight. I'm not losing it, but I'm not gaining it. So I don't know what the story is, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, if if I, if I can eat all I want to and not gain weight, you know. But then again, I don't think I'm eating like I used to either, you know. So, but you know, keep up with the good with the carb, the keto, the carb, whatever, because that works. That definitely works. How long you been doing it? Uh, three weeks. Oh, okay. Tops. And how much have yeah. you lost? How much have you lost so far? Uh, actually, I, I haven't gotten on the scale. Don't do that for about three months. Okay. okay. I really what but I found was no. I found that I didn't get on the scale for about three months, 
Because if you're looking at it every day, you're not going to really see it go down. Then you're going to see it go up a little bit, you know. But if after after three months and you're really doing the thing, you'll get on that scale. You'll be very happy with what you see. Yeah, yeah. well, she she already told me. She's like, I see it. You're not you're not as bloated. You know, I I mm. thinned out my face pretty fast, and people. Uh, <laughs> and one and after the first mm. week and a half, I already had, I had three customers tell me so. They're like, all right, you're losing weight. It's like probably barely, but you know, you see it, you just start cutting, you know, mm -hmm. and people who see me frequently say, so, oh, yeah, you're losing What you first you know. get is something like, did you get a new haircut? I trimmed my beard down yeah. real low. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but it they, used to be kind of like here. Yeah, but, well, I found, I'll tell you what I did, is I, uh, I had a beard at one time, and one day I just decided, yeah, I'll cut it off. So I cut it off, and I go to work. Nobody notices it. <laughs> and and maybe a day later, somebody said to me, that's it, you cut your beard off. Right. You know, it's like it, they don't notice it. If you cut your beard off tomorrow, they wouldn't notice it, you know. I, I, I can back that up. So uh, as a kid, my brother and I would always, dad, he's like, dad, shave your mustache off, shave your mustache off, we want to see it. And he'd always dick around with us and be like, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go shave the mustache. So for, you know, 30 years, never seen my father without a mustache. So <laughs> I go down in the basement. I had I stopped by to see dad. He hollers down. He goes, I'm down here doing laundry. So I run down steps. And he goes, uh, he just looks at me like this. And I go, why are you looking at me like that? And he's like, he's like, you don't notice it? I'm like, no. He goes, look hard. I'm like, Nah. See? I, what are you talking about? And he goes, I shaved my mustache. I went, oh, shit, you shaved your mustache. And at that time, I had a Polaroid camera. I went and I took a Polaroid of it. But but it, it, if he didn't tell me, I would have never noticed. Yeah. It's yeah, ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have anything like a beard, um, Mr. Neary? No. No. Oh, okay. So you never had any. Did you ever have, like, longer hair or something like that that you then made a profound change? No. Oh, okay. So people people get used to seeing only one thing. It happens in law enforcement. Cop arrests somebody. You get in a fight with them. You arrest them. You do whatever you got to do. Three days later, you're in a restaurant sitting across from them. You recognize them because it's kind of your job. They have no idea who you are without the uniform on. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, that, I think that back. So so one girlfriend kept saying, Oh, let me cut your hair. Oh, let me cut your hair. They love to cut, cut your hair. They love to cut your hair. Finally leather. And this part was like really short. So I was so mad. So I ended up shaving my head. So all my friends said, Oh, it looks cool, it looks cool. Cause I'm like, you know, six four, you know, and, and oh it looks cool. And then uh, I let it start growing out again. I told my friends I'm gonna shave it again, and they said, "No, no, no, no! Don't, don't shave it again. You look, you look terrible." I said, "Oh, that's great, friends. Though you know, you guys always enthusiastic. You know, give me back even, even when I looked ugly." But then the uh, truth it's comes when out. You, it's when your friends get you a manscape kit. Then you wonder. <laughs> it, I'll tell you, when I was um, uh, 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 here in New York the first time, I my hair was down to here. You know, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I used to hang around a place called Max's Kansas City, and we'd all hang mm -hmm. out there and so on. One day I decide, you know, everybody's growing their hair long, and it really isn't a hell of a lot of fun. You know, we like to think it's so hip and different and so on, but really, number one, you wash it, and then it takes three hours to dry, you know? <laughs> And 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 it's just in the wind it blows everywhere and everything and I said I'm I, mean, I think I'm tired of this so I went into a barber one day and he says okay how would you like it and I looked in the mirror hair down to here and I said cut it all off mm -hmm. he said you mean all off I said really close to the scalp just cut it short okay he didn't cut it all off but he cut it really short. And he cut it really short, and I looked at myself, and I went, there's a handsome young gentleman, you know. So that night, I go to Max's Kansas City, and all the people that I meet up with go, oh, what'd you do? Your hair, you cut your hair. And I went, yeah, I cut my hair. And they went, how could, why did you do that? 
You had such yeah. nice long hair. I see. Yeah. Well, how come you did that? What, what, what? And they started berating me for doing it, right? I swear to you, a week later, at least half the people who came up to me that night had cut their hair short. Because uh, I, I think they needed somebody to do it so that they could then do it because they were just like me. Hey, I'm sick of this, you know? That that's whole thing, how Alex got off the FBI list. That's how I got off the... They couldn't... <laughs> my mugshot didn't match up, you know? So No, but I mean, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I just felt that whole... I suddenly realized that whole long hair thing when I was at that time of, you know, a hippie back then was not a great idea. And I'm saying that in front of a guy here who's got some long hair. How long is your hair, Brian, uh, Evan? Uh... <laughs> Yeah. That long. Oh, so it's not very long. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. But did you ever have it really long? I did, yes. Yeah. And one day you just decided this is too much a pain in the ass, right? Well, when I got a job and actually became a normal person. <laughs> you became a normal person. <laughs> I started bucking off. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so I, uh, you know... Um, uh, you you cut off a mustache, you cut off a beard, you do anything, and people don't notice it. So it takes a couple of days before they go, "Oh, you did! You cut off your beard, right?" During uh, during quarantine, there was one time I, I didn't shave for a little while, and I shaved everything except for I had the mustache going. <laughs> and Tiffany, she noticed right away. She's like, "Shave that off!" So shave. I left it on like for one or two days. I it scared was, the crap out of my kids when I shaved my beard off. <laughs> I always had a mustache. I've never shaved my upper lip. It was always black, but mm. um, I had a beard growing. And one day before we went fishing for the weekend, I shaved this all off. I went in the bathroom and shaved all the beard off. And I walked in there and they totally freaked out. They were younger. My well, younger with you, kids. I think I would notice. I mean, you would come on and I'd go, who's that? Are you That's exactly what they did. Was, Who the hell is that? You know, no chin, the whole bit. Mm -hmm. Because you got a lot of beard, you know. Yeah. Um, I had to promise to never shave my face ever again when I did it. I had the same experience. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Why? Was somebody saying, boy, are you ugly or what? What was it? No, thing? no, no. Uh, uh, the, the, my girlfriend's kids, they, they, were, they never saw me without, you know, without a beard. I, they were like, oh, my God. Oh, and every time I walked in the room, they're like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, I had to they made it's me promise to never do that again. I had to take you, know, you know something? And... I, I tried, I tried to, a while back, I tried to grow this in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can't get it to grow. I just can't get it to do it. Uh, I, I either, I have it like a dead spot in here somewhere and I, I'm, I'm impatient, I guess. You know, yeah, plus, you have to go through the rough part to get all the other stuff. Yeah, because, you have but, to let it get really shaggy and ragged. And, yeah. And <laughs> well, I'd, I'd let this grow out a bit, you know, from what it was before I was just close to the skin, you know. Uh, and I'm, I've been thinking about going back to a shorter, a shorter beard because I'm not like I. For some reason, some people like how fast does your beard grow? When if you were to cut that off tomorrow, Kevin. How long would it? All you guys have beards except for me. Yeah, but how how oh. how fast would your beard grow? I don't know because I I really stopped shaving altogether when I retired, which was about five, six, seven years ago. But I always had a goatee and all that. So the one Brian, the ones with beard, we don't have to work. You do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know the thing is that uh, that's that, true too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that I that I really uh, uh, what uh, uh, what was the point I was going to make here? Uh, I really um, uh, have thought about you know cutting it back off again, but it doesn't grow back fast. You know, maybe they could maybe they could uh, they could program that chip, put it in your head, and you get a, a full head of hair again. I just hate <laughs> shaving. I just don't like shaving. It's a pain no, in the neither ass. Do, neither do I. And you know, that's the one thing women don't understand is that guys hate shaving. Yeah. You know, uh, and and if you ha I I only shave maybe once a week, 
Yep, me but, too. But you never notice it. The, these cameras paper. aren't th these I'm cameras done. aren't that good that you can see. I've got a stubble here. You know, mm. I don't know my little shitty camera. I yeah. can see there's stubble growing. Yeah, well, maybe I got well, a I, shitty camera. I trimmed my beard uh, substantially less than I had it before, probably uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. That it's small, and the guy who noticed it immediately was uh, my barber. Well, how many people here know my former producer uh, Albert? Sure. And you've seen Good Albert. Good old Albert. Yeah, Albert is called the afternoon show on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. He has grown a beard this long. Mm-hmm. And, and his hair, right? His and, hair too. And his hair too, and. It hasn't been that long. I mean, since he started growing it. And I went, that, you know, I mean, I just can't grow hair that fast. Marjorie says, oh, your hair grows so fast because she cuts it for me. She says, it grows so fast. And I go, well, you know, my face hair doesn't, you know. <laughs> now, let me that ask one. you this. Here, here's an interesting thing, uh, Kevin. Your beard is gray. But your hair is dark. Now let me ask you this: I I bet you don't color it. No, you don't color it. All right. Nope. Because one gray spot, right? Do, yeah. Do people ever hit you with that? Like, how come your beard is gray, but do you color your hair? Yeah. You get that? Especially when I'm doing Santa Claus. Mm. You did. I gotta put the hat on and then spray this side gray. Oh, I, I see. Don't I don't color my hair. I mean, what hair he got left. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is he's got a very gray no, beard. No, he's got a great head of hair. And, and, then, and then right here, it starts becoming... Mm -hmm. right? well, yeah. well, you, well, you know what happens. It's gray you, right about there. You do yeah. gray from the chin up. You know that, don't you? Well, of no, course, you, you. nobody knows it more than you do. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's how you gray. Apparently so. Yeah, my beard was gray before my... If you look at my license, I think I've shown you my license. I look like an Arab terrorist. <laughs> Everything was jet black, you know, oh boy. 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. But uh, is the hair starting... Your hair is starting to go gray, right? Well, just this part, you know, it's always been like that. But I've always yeah. had this stripe up here, mm -hmm. this little stripe for years and years wow. and years and... You know, my barber used to say, yeah, people pay to do that well, shit. My friend yeah. Larry Bubbles Brown has a little gray streak right here. But you know how he got it? He got struck by lightning. Well, maybe that's what happened to me. Maybe yeah. I got dropped or something. Yeah, he got, oh, he or got, you're related to a Rhodesian <laughs> Ridgeback. No, Kevin. but he, he was he was struck by lightning, or as he put it, touched by God. <laughs> you know. He got he really did he get hit by a lightning? Yep, yeah, got hit by lightning. Yeah. Oh, He's playing. He's playing uh, over here at Campbell, like like five minutes away from my house. Uh, mm -hmm. Like in a couple weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's, are you uh, going to go see him? Four, four other comedians. But, where yeah. at? Where are they? Where are they? Was there a comedy uh, club? Yeah, there? It's called Campbell Comedy. Uh, something huh. like that. Let me check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I didn't yeah. know there was one there. You oh. know, there's just oh no, it's at it's at Los Gatos. It's a number one Broadway. My friend runs that club. Oh, and, oh okay. Yeah, they're they're doing something at the end of uh, of uh, downtown there. I'm gonna be up there Saturday. Huh. Yeah, the big parade. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Broadway yeah. is in Los Gatos. Yeah. What <clears throat> what is what does Los Gatos mean? The what? The cat. The cat. Yeah. Oh, of course, Gatos. Yeah. Okay. Oh, then he yeah. yeah he's doing a lot of stuff lately. I had a girlfriend who used to live in Florida in Boca Raton. You know what that translates into? Yeah, uh, mouth of, what is it? Carp. Carp. Mouth of carp. No, I don't know. Rat. That's right. The mouth of the rat. And if you look at Boca Raton, is there is, it's like this cape or whatever, where it looks like the face of a rat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, when people, I would love to move down there when people say, where do you live? I, I live in Rat's Face, you know. Is that the Spanish translation? Yeah. 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 Pam says that's the Spanish. 
It's not French? No. Breton seems to be French more than... Yeah. Boca is mouth. Boca is mouth. Boca is mouth, oh, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway. So uh, let's see here. What else is happening in the in the news? Well, uh, Trump turned over his uh, his income tax returns. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Well, the yeah. IRS turned it over to the. To yeah. The well. House. Yeah. Uh, and I think they're going to find out how poor he really is. Mm -hmm. I think they're also going to find he hasn't paid taxes in fifteen years. Yeah. You know. So I mean, it's not going to be a it's it. But they say they're not going to release them. They're not going to mm. let the public know what's in them. And I'm going, mm. why not? That's what we that's pay right. for. You know, that's what we've been rooting for. That's right. We want to know. But uh, they, uh, they, they, got, they, got, they, got, they, they have this. The Senate committee or the congressional committee has his tax records now. So that's uh, that's. You would good. think yeah. somebody is going to figure it out. Oh, somebody's going to get it. Yeah, there's no and question. They're going to publish it. Oh somehow. no, no, you can't leak it illegally, they, but yeah. you know it'll be leaked. Somebody on the committee will leak it. You know, just mm. to get it out there. You know. Yeah. Shh, don't tell anybody I gave it to you. you know. That's right. Yeah. TMZ. Yeah, but TMZ uh, gets a lot of stuff like that. Uh, the, yeah, they they break a lot of news stories. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I hope somebody gets it out there because I would love to see it. You know, mm. a lot of shits and giggles there. Yeah. Fake news. Fake news. Um, but anyway, so let me see here. I'm trying to think. There's some other stories, and I just I what happens is I follow the news all day long, and I get all these stories in my mind, and then I can't remember any to talk about. You know. <laughs> um. Well, I have a story for you. Okay. <clears throat> I got to show you. So for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. I came home and I found this thing on the front lawn. One of these things. Can you see it? What? What is it? Uh, oh, it's, it's, it, it's a giant blow up snowman. I hate those fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> when they're deflated, they make your lawn look like it has trash all over it. I think they're the worst. Uh, well, who put it on the lawn? Wasn't me. You kind of Kirsten did it. She, you know. I assume so, that's your your betrothed. Yes. Yeah. My bet <laughs> I like that word. I'm glad you used it. She put it on the front lawn. Where are where are you located? What part of the world are South, you? South Jersey. I'm like South right over the bridge Jersey. from Philly. Yeah, that, that's a home of giant snowmen on front lawns. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, it, 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 you know, you drive by during the day and it just looks like you have shit all over your lawn. What? You know, like, it's, it, it's, 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 what is she, what do you do? Deflate it during the day or something or what? Yeah, I have it on a timer. Timer, yeah. You have it on a I've, timer so that it blows up at, 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 at night? Yeah. Three o'clock in the afternoon it starts. My neighbor's got about six or eight of them and they all stand up at night and then in the morning looks like a massacre. Well, why don't wait? Wait a minute. Let me ask you this: Why can't you leave those things? You can, you can but, but they just blow around. around. Yeah, it don't waste electricity all during the day. Well, then they become one of those things you find in used car lots. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, now, Kevin, yeah. when when they're all deflated, does the lawn look like shit? Yes. Yeah, it looks yeah. like a massacre. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's like yeah, just looks like and trash that, everywhere. So keep them blo so keep them blown up. Okay, uh, we had a storm well. It's just a suggestion from a well, from a and don't 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 practice. take don't take my criticism to heart because what do I know about Christmas? I'm Jewish, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I would just think that if I had an inflatable <coughs> snowman, I would leave it inflated. Or do you have to constantly have the motor on in order for it to be inflated? It, yeah, and it's a computer fan, and I burn about, and on average, eighty dollars in gas a day between my two trucks. So, what do I give a shit about my carbon footprint? It's, it's already through the roof. Just, <laughs> it's a fucking computer fan that's out there. It ain't burning anything. It, it, it's only like that, so that wouldn't be that expensive. Yeah, and the twinkle lights. 
And the twinkle lights. There's a couple twinkle lights in there. You know, we just got rid of it's going to lower our electric bill. Is we got rid of these uh, our cable, and the cable boxes. Mm -hmm. And those cable boxes, I read, use at least eight dollars a month in electricity. Because if you ever go over and feel the cable box, they're hot. They're really hot. They use mm -hmm. a, they use a lot of heat. They and they could make them so they were more electric efficient. But I'm saving like almost forty bucks a month without those boxes eating up the electricity. You know what you said? You said something to. I want to run this by and see what you think. I'm not convinced about these electric cars at all. I I think there's no other way to reduce what we're doing to this planet than to just give shit up. And all the electric car does is just shift everything over to like the battery mining. I don't and, I don't necessarily I mean, disagree with you on that. I, I keep asking that question about, you know, we, we have to use a certain about, amount of something to make electricity. Well, I say hydrogen's better. Hydrogen would probably be better. What about, it? Well, you know, early on, well, the thing that uh, Jay Leno was working on, early on in the 18, in the, uh, in the, in the teens, of the 19th cent, uh, 20th century, uh, we had steam cars. There was a thing called the Stanley Steamer that ran on steam. Yeah. Why can't we have cars that run on steam or at least a more modernized version of that concept? But steam, steam is a way of producing power, but you have to create the steam, so it doesn't take away the, uh, the need for energy. Yeah, you're right. It's a transfer, uh, and and electricity. Every time you convert power, um, there's a loss. It's it's just it's the rule. You can't get around it. So, I mean, a buddy of mine bought a uh, electric car, and I was like, oh, cool, okay. So, um, I looked up where he lived, and it, most of his power comes from um, uh, natural gas. So I said, okay, so you have a natural gas car now, but. It wouldn't be as efficient if he actually had a natural gas car. Some places in this country, you could be driving a fucking coal car. So, you know, you you don't even want to be driving around electric. You might as well be driving a gasoline engine. And then when the battery's bad, it's got to go to a hazmat, though. Oh, God, and, and just mining the batteries. By the way, just, do, you, do you know that I think it was last month or something in New York City, there were 134 fires caused by lithium-ion batteries? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why they had to make special special regulations to put them on airplanes and fly them around and you know transport them because they're they can spontaneously combust. Well, your actually. your iPhone has a yeah. lithium ion battery in it, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ever seen a package that shows up at your door with all the stickers and everything on yeah. all, all over it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hazardous material. I remember when those regulations okay. went into effect. They went into somewhere around, I want to say, 2012. Yeah. So you started saying, really yeah. getting hairy. Yeah. So you're saying that hydrogen is probably the best answer. Well, it's still got the same the same theory. You still have to. It's a transfer of power, and that power uh, has to come from somewhere. Somewhere, yeah, but the, the, the end result is a little better because it's just water vapor, but you're still you're producing electricity through that. There's there's nothing less sexy than sitting there and thinking and thinking and thinking and then realize you have no fucking answers and that you might as well just be sitting on your hands. And that's why this whole discussion is just like... It's, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know. you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you can be bothered by, by uh, electric cars, uh, the only advantage to an electric car over a gas-powered car is that we're going to run out of fossil fuel eventually. They, you know, it took a bunch of desiccating dinosaurs hundreds of thousands of years before it became oil. You know, if you if you guys want to, the best seven-minute clip you'll ever see on the internet about this issue is you got to type in Jordan Peterson on climate change. Yes, I saw minutes. that. I saw it. Oh, it's very yeah. good. Yeah, and, and, and when you're done, you're just like, fuck it. And you just like walk, you just walk away. Because it's just, he's absolutely right. And, you know, there's like no freaking hope. And it, <laughs> it, 
you know, bringing bringing it's everybody right. together. And he 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 explains it in like seven minutes flat. The whole fucking problem with all of it and why it's politicized and why it's going nowhere and we're never going to fix it. <laughs> And no one's going to throw out their iPhone, so just fucking forget it. <laughs> you know, it's like... It's and, and probably it, true. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to have to go back to horses. You know? Well, the, the, the horses were far worse. Because, I know. Because what happened is in, in a city like New York, well, literally, there was a two-foot-high wall of horse crap on the side of every street. It produced methane. It produced <laughs> methane, but... You know what I'm saying? It just, it was untenable, untenable. But, you know, we replace it with something else that's untenable, and the solution to that will be something else that will have its set of problems. What we, I guess, have to have is something that has the least amount of problems. You know, so. That's the thing that frustrates me, is that it's supposed, it's supposed to be the solution. Okay, now we're going to do it. We're going to change it and make it happen. And it's only good for this section amount of time and then once the person that, or the people that fixed that, made that solution, there's a whole section of shit that happens afterwards <clears throat> to be left behind and they got to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're yeah. long gone. Yeah. And the, and the infrastructure, the engine becomes a monster that will then fight against the new change. Yeah. You know, so like the electric, you know, the electric car thing becomes a thing. And then now we're like, oh, my God, we have all these problems we got to address. And then you have this like monster electric car industry that's going to be like what GM was doing and, and all the, you know, the oil companies, you know, trying to. I mean, know, if you were out here in California, you look around at almost every other freaking car now is electric. Mm. Really? It's that's insane. Funny. Tesla. Yeah, ask, ask Brian. How I mean, many of them? How many of them, Tesla. how many of them do you see stalled by the side of the road because they went out of, out of power? Not many. You don't Not see many. a lot of them stalled. Really? No. Never. So, hmm. but, but they're all they're all over. I mean, you, they're, they're all over the place, and they're parked in the freaking malls, getting charged <laughs> up, and they're on the side of the roads, getting charged up, and everything else. But mm -hmm. they're everywhere. How do you they pay? How everywhere. do you pay for the electricity to charge them up? Well, I don't know. They charge in for that. I know they charge. There's some stations that you know charge you twenty bucks for a quick charge or whatever. But I don't know how they do it. You got the electric car. Ryan goes to work and charges it for free. Yeah, okay, yeah that'll end. Free. All all of the businesses in Silicon Valley have have charging stations at their buildings. And it's like, for and it's all, well. around, and it's you go around the yeah. area like in Sunnyvale and stuff like that. Every company has those first stalls. They have a handicap, and then over here they have all the Tesla or yeah. all the charging stations for all kinds of cars. Mm -hmm. But you they know, damn have... well, sooner or later you're going to see Arco charging station. Yeah, but yeah, it's serious. Yeah. You, you can't say one out of ten, but there's you know you may not see out of you know 50, 10, 10 cars go by, you may see one here and one there, and then all of a sudden you see like four Teslas in a row. I mean, it's, just, it's nonstop. I mean, there, if you look close you, enough, you, you see the. the you see the volts and you see all the other cars if you look close enough. A lot yeah, of those blend in. You don't even notice. Them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well. Now Neil, Neil Young was on Howard Stern the other day, and he was going on and on about how biofuel is the answer. We have the infrastructure and all that. And then I was talking to someone else, and they're like, "Nah, man. When they when they run short on biofuel, they start burning all kinds of shit. Up you know, in Canada, they were burning fucking tires, and 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 I'm like, oh, but, but I know no nothing money. about there's biofuel." No money. There's no money in this. Yeah. There's money in the electric yeah. car with Musk. So that's why it's going crazy with Musk. Musk has a handle on this, and he's just doesn't matter if it's safe or not. If all the cars blow up after 30 years and kill everybody inside, he's Don't making so much money off of this. Yeah. It, there's all kinds of money there. Every other kind of kind of way of doing well, that's, this that's fine with me no money I, there. that's fine with me i just want don't want him planting a chip in my brain and having him control it anyway oh, well. hey listen thank you so much for joining us tonight especially to the first brian who was on tonight because that's it's nice brian. to see a, 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 a welcome face uh jeff always good having you here alan good having you here uh and uh brian the other brian uh Thank you. And, of course, Kevin, 
ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you so much for calling. I appreciate it. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, big wave goodbye at you, okay? There we go. Let me see here. What, what happened to my music? What happened? Oh, there it is. Okay. I, I don't know. My hand, my hand hit it or something. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm told by Jack that he's going to do a show tonight. So we'll let him do a show tonight. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Yeah.